Hey audio geeks, if I sound weird today it's because I've got a really heavy head cold but thankfully it's getting better and it's not going to stop me making another video because let's face it that's the kind of hero I can be <laughs> only joking. Now I'm quite excited because today we're going to be talking about the Bowers & Wilkins PX8 headphones which are the latest entry into the ultra premium Bluetooth noise cancelling category. What do I mean by ultra premium? I'm really referring to Bluetooth headphones costing over £400, $400, and for that money, I would expect a perfect trifecta of luxurious build quality, great technology in terms of Bluetooth connectivity as well as noise cancelling, and most importantly, terrific sound quality. You can, after all, get headphones with really good noise cancellation and Bluetooth connectivity for much less money, such as the really good Sennheiser Momentum 4s or the Sony 1000XM5s. So, do the PX8s justify their ultra-premium £599 price point? Bowers & Wilkins are a British hi-fi company with an impeccable pedigree. They've made really good pairs of Bluetooth headphones over the years. Now the PX8s are clearly the next step up, attempting to appeal to the audiophile as well as to the well-heeled consumer. Now I think that they're priced to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Apple AirPods Max, which remember retail for a similar price, £549. So straight out of the box, the PX8s do look stunning. While sticking to the established Bowers & Wilkins design language, the PX8s bring premium materials and refinement to the party. There is gorgeous soft Nappa leather coating the ear cups and the headband. Now I really appreciated the wonderful sliding aluminium adjustment mechanism and even the buttons feel nice and tactile. Unlike the AirPods Max, you can turn these off completely and they charge via USB-C with a stated battery life of around 30 hours. But that's with noise cancelling on and I have to give props to BMW for quoting the battery life with noise cancelling turned on because let's face it, this is how most people will use these headphones. The buttons on the right ear cup control playback whilst the solitary button on the left toggles a noise cancelling mode. You can also change the function of that button via the app to make it trigger the voice assistant but unfortunately it can't do both, which is a shame. On some other headsets, a short tap, for example, would change the noise cancellation mode and a longer hold would activate the voice assistant, but we don't get that here. Weight-wise, they come in at 320 grams, but they feel supremely comfortable worn over several hours. The clamping force is medium, I'd say, and there's not too much headband pressure either. The ear cups, however, aren't the biggest, so if you do have outsized ears, you might find that the cups um, exert a little bit of pressure on your ears. Oh, and you do get a fabulous hard case for carrying them around. They don't fold up completely, but the ear cups swivel in both directions so you can lay them flat. The case is very robust and inside it is a secret compartment which houses the supplied USB-C and 3.5 millimeter cables. So Apple do take note for the AirPods Max version two. So I think that we can confidently say that the first part of the trifecta, build quality, comfort, accessories, um, those are all excellent here with the PX8. So let's move on to have a look at the technology. These are Bluetooth 5.2 equipped and they support a wide range of codecs including AAC, SBC and various flavors of Aptex including Aptex HD as long as your phone supports that. Sadly there's no LDAC support which is a standard which has universally been supported by Android smartphones for the last few years. But look, I tend to not worry too much about Bluetooth codecs these days. It's very hard to tell the difference between Aptex and AAC, for example, particularly when you're listening whilst you're out and about, which, let's face it, is usually the case. Remember, if you have an iPhone, the best you're going to get is AAC, and that's what the AirPods Max use for their audio transmission. The Bluetooth connection itself is rock solid, even in crowded public areas and these will fast pair with Android devices. 
They also support multi-point pairing so you can connect two devices at the same time and I've found it to work really well, seamlessly switching between audio on my MacBook Pro and my Pixel 7 Pro. It's the best implementation of multi-point that I personally have encountered. There's also an option to have music pause and resume when you take the headphones off but I found this implementation to be a little bit flaky and it's a real nuisance, particularly if you're listening to an audio book or a podcast because you kind of don't know how much you've missed. The noise cancelling is better than I thought it would be. We're not talking about AirPods Max levels of isolation here, but it's good enough to cut down on the background hubbub. The noise cancelling is good enough that I don't need to crank up the volume too high to enjoy my music. Now the transparency mode is also surprisingly good ambient noise is transmitted in a reasonably natural way so you don't get that same tinny robotic tone that you get with the Sony uh, XM5s for example. There is a fairly rudimentary app which you can download to control all the action. In terms of sound signature it offers the ability to tweak just the bass and the treble settings which works okay but it isn't a patch on the Sony app for example. At least however unlike the AirPods Max you do get the same features regardless of whether you're using an iPhone or an Android device. Um, so the tech is good, I think we can say, but now we come to the most important criterion for viewers of this channel anyway, which of course is the sound quality. Now I've been listening extensively for the last few days, the main sources being either my Pixel 7 Pro or my iPhone 14 Pro over Bluetooth. You can of course connect the PX8s to your device over USB-C or via the 3.5 millimeter uh, adapter, but I must confess that I didn't really try that, as I think most people buy these to be used out and about as Bluetooth cans on the go. I think that there's a fair amount of digital signal processing applied to ensure that the sound remains consistent regardless of the volume you're listening at or the noise cancelling mode you're using. So the question you're going to ask is, never mind all that tech waffle, do these actually sound ultra premium? Well, I can honestly say that these are the best Bluetooth noise cancelling cans that I've heard. So let's start with the weakest aspect, which is a pretty narrow sound stage. Now you're going to get that with any closed back headphone, leave alone Bluetooth closed back headphones. And the sound stage that we get here is neither particularly wide or deep. It is, however, convincingly 3D within those constrained limits. And the imaging and instrument separation that we get is also really good. I find it really easy to pinpoint where all the individual instruments are situated in the soundstage. So for example, listen to the first track from Gogo -Go Penguin's excellent Between Two Waves album released earlier this year. And at around the 50 second mark, when the acoustic double bass slides in, it claims its own spot in the soundstage very distinctively. The other technicality which makes these headphones so good is the timbre of the mid-range instruments in particular, and also of the treble percussive elements. Acoustic guitars and pianos in particular sound rich, full-bodied, lifelike, with a convincing natural tonality. Now, one of my favorite tracks of all time is Says by Niels Fram, which is an astonishing slow build of a track, encompassing a delicate, repeated synth motif accompanied by live piano playing, and the whole thing eventually builds into one of the most extraordinary and satisfying synth crescendos. If you haven't heard it, go and check it out. It is a transformative, transcendent musical uh, experience. I'm not overstating it, honestly. Now the PX8s convey the initial intimacy of Niels's piano playing and then when those synths kind of build and crash in they effortlessly switch to give you that massive scale. It's a great way to experience this fabulous track. In terms of the timbre of percussive elements, cymbals sound very natural lacking that awful and really off-putting metallic tin tinge that some cheaper Bluetooth headphones impart to them. Detail retrieval is okay, but it doesn't compete with something like a mid-range planar magnetic headphone like the Sundara's. Now it really is much better than the AirPods Max or the Sony's. It is possible to pick out subtle nuances in well-recorded music, but the edges aren't as sharply drawn as on the Sundara's, which isn't always a bad thing when you're using lossy Bluetooth compression. 
it makes for a very smooth listening experience, even if the quality of the source file isn't perfect. Something like the Sundaras is more likely to reveal deficiencies. Turning to the frequency response, I think it's fair to say that these are tuned really pleasantly. They're not flat, analytic studio monitoring headphones. And I think the best way of describing them is tastefully energetic, which means that there's just enough color to the bass and treble to give you a really vibrant, kind of almost live sounding presentation. I haven't seen a frequency response graph yet, but I suspect that it would probably be mildly V-shaped. Now I vastly prefer this tuning to that of the AirPods Max, which had a hollowed out mid-range with a very pronounced sub bass and a really hot treble. It was kind of almost U-shaped if you like. So the bass here certainly is present, but it's beautifully agile and taut with some really nice layering. This is true regardless of whatever genre of music you're listening to. So the bass guitar riff, which opens Killing in the Name, Rage Against the Machine, sounds really textured with plenty of bite and detail. And when the bass drum kicks in during the pre-chorus, it has real slam and impact. Switch to a trip hop track, with really deep electronic bass like Karma Coma by Massive Attack, and you'll be really impressed by the speed and dexterity of the bass as it kind of slouches along behind the vocals. It's a kind of bass that really wants to make you get up and, and move, even for a chap like me who can't dance to save his life. The mid-range is rich with vocals, particularly male vocals sounding really full-bodied. Female vocals, I found, can sometimes sound slightly distant, but it isn't a deal breaker. And her voice floats really convincingly and distinctively above the powerful bass line, and it sounds pretty solid. But some people might prefer a slightly more vocal forward presentation. I think, uh, for example, in something like uh, the raw demo version of Sheila Nagig by PJ Harvey, um, that does sound as if the px 8 take the edge off her really visceral vocal, making it sound a little bit more polite, which I think is to the detriment of the track. And it's probably because of the slight smoothing that we get of the jagged edges. So yeah, I think sometimes the vocals perhaps could be a little bit more prominent in the mix, but it's a minor criticism. Now I love listening to orchestral classical music through the px 8 It's got the finesse to convey the scale of even big sounding recordings, like the new Deutsche Grammophon recording of the Schumann symphonies conducted by Daniel Barenboim. It's also up to conveying the intimacy of a small scale string quartet though. Clearly, being closed backs, you're not going to get as much air as you do with open backs, but these outclass any other Bluetooth closed backs that I've listened to in terms of classical music listening. The treble here is nicely extended but well controlled, which does give a little bit of extra air and space and some definition, but there's no hint of sibilance here. This isn't what I'd describe as a hot treble, but it does offer enough zing and pizzazz, I know those aren't audiophile terms, to prevent the PX8 from sounding dark or veiled. So for me, the tuning and technicalities are really good, and I find listening to these out and about to give me 80 to 90% of the audiophile experience compared to listening to really good open backed headphones, the HD 650s, for example, at home. But remember, we've got the added bonus and convenience of portability and noise cancellation. You don't have to lug a DAC, an amp, and wired headphones around with you. I think where they lose out most sonically is in the narrow sound stage, in the lack of finer levels of detail retrieval, and definitely perhaps by not having a slightly more forward vocal presentation. If you're after an analytical flat frequency response, you're not gonna get it with the px 8 Instead, I would describe these as energetic and engaging and fun. Yeah, let's bring the F word into it, fun. I think fun factor is really important for portable Bluetooth headphones, which I'm listening to out and about in noisy environments. Now there is no contest in my opinion between these and the AirPods Max. Those lack the sonic technicalities and finesse of the PX8 and I vastly prefer the tuning of the PX8 to the AirPods. They also beat out the likes of the cheaper 1000XM5s by sounding so much more alive and natural 
and I think they also represent a significant upgrade over the Momentum 4s, which had way too much sub bass and a far less natural timbre than the PX8s. I'd really love to pitch the PX8s against the Focal Batisse, which I know have also been touted as offering near audiophile sound quality. In the UK, the Batisse are £100 more at £699. It would be fantastic to try a pair though. So for Cal, if you're listening or any other companies that would like to send me a pair of Batiste, please do send them over and we will do a direct head-to-head -head comparison with the PX8s. So ultimately, if you are in the fortunate position of being able to splash £600 on headphones, Bluetooth noise cancelling headphones, the PX8s are a really solid recommendation. And we can say that the trifecta of stunning design and build, really decent tech, and most importantly, great sound quality, does go a long way towards justifying your expensive purchase. I'm gonna give them an Audio Fixation Silver Award, and I think they are fantastic, and I've loved using mine. Now, disclaimer, these weren't sent to me, and no one's paying me for the review. I actually went out and bought a pair, and I'm really happy with my purchase. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a like and a subscription to the channel is always really appreciated. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. You know I love interacting with you guys and stay tuned for more videos coming up soon. Till then, stay safe.